Thank you for joining us. Our goal today is to introduce you to our 2010 ISX-15 engine. I'm Lou Wenzler at Cummins. I lead our on-highway communications. Also joining me is Dr. Steve Charlton. Steve is Vice President of Heavy Duty Engineering. Our objectives in our conversation today are, yes, to introduce you to the 2010 ISX-15 engine, but to talk through some design features of the engine, talk about our emission technology choice, talk about the engine benefits, and then some summary comments. So Steve, thank you for joining me. Oh, you're welcome, Lou. So before we talk about the engine, let me ask you to make some comments around why we have chosen selective catalytic reduction as our technology choice for emission reduction. Well, Lou, it's all about fuel economy. Um, SCR technology was first introduced by Cummins in 2006 in Europe. We've been uh, very familiar with it for a number of years. Um, but like a lot of technologies, it doesn't stand still. And what we've uh, found with our Cummins Emission Solutions Group are tremendous improvements in the performance of SCR, such that um, in early 2008, uh, a system became available to us known as copper zeolite that allows us to achieve greater than 90% conversion of NOx in the tailpipe using SCR. And what that lets us do is to unload the engine of its burden of emission control for NOx, in other words, reduce the amount of recycled exhaust gas, mm -hmm. and get better fuel economy from the engine. And of course, fuel economy is king. Um, it also lets us get better reliability and better performance, especially drivability and throttle response. But we were looking at an in-cylinder approach early on. I'm sure there were some challenges with that. Would you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. The in-cylinder solution, Lou, you're trying to achieve the 2010 standards of 0.2 grams of NOx entirely within the cylinder. And to do that, you need very large amounts of recycled exhaust gas, about 40 to 45 percent. So you can imagine that's a lot of pumping work to bring that gas back into the intake. And it also challenges the combustion system such that a lot of particulate is produced and then particulate is caught in the diesel particulate filter mm -hmm. and it has to be regenerated. So there are a couple of reasons there why um, the in-cylinder solution is not as competitive on fuel economy as the new SCR solution is. Okay, excellent. Well, let's move to the engine now. Let's talk about the engine. Where would you like to begin? Well, I'd like to begin on the hot, what we call the hot side of the engine, Lou. This is where the exhaust leaves the engine, and then in a minute, maybe we'll take a look at the, uh, the intake side of the engine. Uh, right in front of me here, you'll see the variable geometry turbocharger. This is mostly carryover from, from 2007. We've made some improvements to it, though, that are significant for 2010. We've improved the aerodynamics of the compressor and turbine wheels. Um, we've also worked on the reliability of the turbocharger with some, uh, some real improvements in that area. The electric actuator that you see on top is controlled by the engine control module. So that lets us position the variable geometry element that's in the turbo uh, very precisely and very quickly. It gives us great response and great controllability of uh, both air and EGR. It's a very uh, vital component in that sense. If you look closely at the turbine end, you can actually see the moving nozzle vanes. And uh, this, is the, this is the area where we gain control over the speed of the turbo and its performance. Downstream of the turbo, you can see the dosing injector. Mm -hmm. This is where we, in 07 engines, introduce a little bit of fuel to regenerate the after treatment. I'm happy to say that in 2010, we will retain that injector but it's really going to have very little to do. Because of uh, the architecture of the SCR engine, we're able to have more NOx going into the diesel particulate filter than in the 07 engine. This regenerates the uh, soot that's contained in the filter passively, and we don't have to spend uh, fuel cleaning the DPF. So that's a great advantage. Okay. Now, on the, uh, at the front end of, of this side of the engine, you can see exhaust gas being uh, taken from the exhaust manifold, taken through a bellows into a stainless steel tube and shell heat exchanger. That's what we call the EGR cooler. The exhaust gas leaves the EGR cooler and is brought up to the top of the engine where it passes through the EGR valve. 
So importantly, the EGR valve is on the cold side of the EGR cooler, where it um, has a very friendly environment for its electronics and its operation. And we found uh, you know, terrific reliability with the EGR valve in that position. Downstream of the EGR valve, then, we measure the EGR with the delta P sensor. We've eliminated the delta P tubes that were on the O2 and the O7 engines, and we fully integrated that measurement system uh, into the EGR flow. And then finally, you see the EGR tube passing across the top of the valve cover and into the intake where it enters the uh, engine cylinders. Well, let's now take a look at the front of the engine. Certainly, Lou. So this shows the front of the engine, Lou, and I think the first thing to notice is the, the very clean lines of the uh, ISX 15-liter engine. Mm -hmm. um, but you will notice one thing that's different. If, if you're familiar with the, uh, the O7 or the O2, and, and uh, many of us are, there's a lot of difference here. We've got this, uh, basically this space. This is where the drive gear used to be for the fuel cam. Okay. That's the camshaft that was used to drive the unit injectors and inject fuel into the cylinders on both the O2 and the O7 engine. So we've uh, cleaned up the lines of the engine in that area. And I think you'll agree it's, uh, it's got pretty clean lines, pretty smooth outline, and, and really quite an elegant design. Oh yeah, absolutely.